My Lords, I am pleased to rise in support of the Abortion Disability Equality Bill, and I commend my noble friend, Lord Shinkwin, for bringing it forward. As a parent myself, and a friend to mothers who have disabled children, I appreciate that this is a hugely difficult and sensitive subject, whichever way one approaches it. But the arguments about the value, contribution and importance of people with disabilities are just too important for me to remain silent. Lord Shinkwin's bill accomplishes two very important objectives. First, it restores equality to the face of our legislation as set out in the 1967 Abortion Act. The issue of Section 11D being discriminatory was indeed raised, as Lord Alton has said, by the former Disability Rights Commission soon after its creation in August 2001, when it stated it reinforces negative stereotypes of disability. And there is substantial support for the view that to permit terminations at any point during a pregnancy on the grounds of risk of disability while time limits apply to other grounds set out in the Abortion Act, is incompatible with valuing disability and non-disability equally. In common with a wide range of disability and other organisations, the DRC believes the context in which parents choose whether to have a child should be one in which disability and non-disability are valued equally. When I first found that this clause existed in the Abortion Act, I was really surprised. I struggled to understand how British society that seeks to value disabled people in every way and is a world leader on the issue of disability equality could behave so differently in its approach to a disabled baby in the womb, allowing abortion up to birth for disability. For every other situation, it's only permitted up to 24 weeks, unless the life of the mother is at risk. In some ways, even more troubling, however, is that disability, which is a protected characteristic in UK law, should be a basis for abortion at all. <coughs> lest anyone should be tempted to think that one can be discriminatory in a confined abortion context and not have it spill out into life beyond the womb, the evidence received by the inquiry into the abortion on the grounds of disability in 2013 is less than reassuring. The representative of the British Academy of Childhood Disability stated, parents I have spoken to have said that doctors treating their children with Down syndrome, as we've already heard, <coughs> criticize them for not having abortions, saying their children will not have a good life. I have, all, and another said, I have already come across people who view my choice to have my child as detrimental to the rest of society. And this has certainly been my experience as one of my own friends went through this process. And the mutterings at school gates, it, it gets into our attitudes as a society. You know, why did they choose to have that baby? All these accounts are available in the report of the inquiry which is in the House of Lords Library. My Lords, I'm afraid that this is an inevitable consequence of the law endorsing the idea that abortion on the grounds of disability is perfectly acceptable. My Lords, the second crucial objective that the bill fulfills relates very specifically to the consulting room. One of the ways in which the message of our current legislation is communicated is through those charged with the responsibility of its implementation. If disability was not a ground for abortion, doctors would not mention it. The fact that disability is a ground for abortion, however, means that doctors will, quite properly, inform a mother carrying a child with a disability that they should, they should or could have an abortion. What a significant number of parents are saying, though, is that they feel in this a very real pressure to have an abortion. Again, the inquiry into abortion on the grounds of disability heard some very concerning evidence. One mother said that she felt she was treated differently because she was carrying a disabled baby. Another said that she experienced some disdain from medical professionals for deciding to keep her baby. 
And indeed, you can see the effect of the law on decision-making and the approach to abortion by looking at the latest statistics. Between 2005 and 2015, the abortion rate, as we have heard in Great Britain, remained largely constant, decreasing very slightly by 0.3%. But between 2005 and 2015, the rate for abortion with disability up to birth rose by 68%. If this was any other group, for any other protected characteristic, we would be seriously concerned. The contrast between abortion, approaches to abortion of the able-bodied and abortion of the disabled is deeply concerning. It provides yet another reason why the noble Lord, Lord Shinkwin's bill, should become law. Now, of course, Lord Shinkwin's bill will not mean that if a mother discovers at any point up to her last 21-week scan that her baby is disabled, that the option of abortion is not still open to her up to 24 weeks. It obviously would remain so. And this point, as we have heard, was recently confirmed through a legal opinion issued by Hugh Preston QC on the Shinkwin Bill, which states that it is, quote, succinct and limited in its scope. If enacted, it would remove Section 11D of the Act completely. It follows that the practical effect of abolishing Section 11D of the Act is that any abortions by reason of disability will need to be carried out within the first 24 weeks subject to Section 11A of the Act, unless there is a risk of serious permanent damage to the mother, in which case they will remain permissible until birth. Thus, abortions by reason of disability will remain permissible but subject to the same safeguards as apply in any other case. Crucially, however, though, the provision of this bill removes discrimination expressly on the face of our legislation. And our Abortion Act would send out the message that disabled lives are worthy of equal protection as able-bodied lives. This legislation is overdue, and I very much hope that the government will take their equalities responsibilities in this matter seriously and support this bill.